Hello and welcome to this edition of Biology Bites. Now, today I'm going to be talking about the bass advantage factor. Now, in a lot of my Biology Bites, you always hear me mention advantage and like what I've talked about, uh, distracted baits and injured and dying baits, but it's, it all comes down to advantage. They won't attempt to eat a bait unless they feel like they have an advantage. Uh, they don't want to expend a lot of energy. They don't want to cruise around and run all over the place trying to eat things. They want the advantage. And I have a really good story about this that really takes home this fact that they have to have the advantage or they want advantage to either hit a bait or not hit a bait. Growing up as fisheries wildlife major and that being my degree, I always had lots of tanks in my house, sometimes five, six at a time, all with native species. I had bluegill, red ear, trout, carp, green sunfish, bass, uh, catfish, just any and every native, and I'd also have crawdads in with them and newts and other things, just because it was a good window into how they go about their daily lives. Well, I had this one tank, and I had a good seven, eight inch little bass in there, and his tank buddy was this big seven inch crawdad. Now the crawdad is obviously a natural prey to the bass, but he never had an advantage. I mean, this thing was as big as him. I mean, every once in a while he'd go down and sort of look at it, and that crawdad would raise those big claws, and bass back off and go about his business. One day I came home and I, I saw the molt. And I, I don't know, most of you probably know this, but if you don't, uh, crawdads have an exoskeleton. Uh, they grow big inside it and then they split their shell, crawl out, and they change color. They become very uh, brown and mottled, or if they have a lot of red on them, it becomes a, becomes a very uh, orangish, light orangish color because they're basically a big gelatinous ball of goo. They, they can't move, they need to just sit for like, I don't know, half hour, hour, and let their outer shell solidify and harden, and then they can go back to being this big, mean creature that cruises around the bottom. Well, I'm, I'm looking, and I had a bunch of rocks in the bottom, and I'm looking through it, I'm trying to figure out, you know, where's my nice, new, shiny crawdad? And I'm looking around, I can't find him anywhere, and all of a sudden I look up at my bass, and he is so fat that you can see the skin in between his scales on his belly. He ate his tank buddy. He'd been living there with him for like almost a year. Never bugged him, never paid me attention, suddenly ate him. Instinct kicked in, the advantage factor. Saw that thing, saw it changed, knew it had no protection, it had the advantage, he ate it. And I, I wish I'd have been there to see it because I, I don't know how long it took him because like I said, this thing was almost as big as him, but he got it down. He ate his tank, buddy. But this is what I'm trying to, to get people to realize, that if through your presentation, your technique, you offer your bait in a way that the bass feels like it has an advantage, you're probably gonna catch more fish, and hopefully, bigger fish. I hope this helps. Until next time.